Good afternoon to each and every one of you. Praise God we're able to to come together once more, that we're able to get His Word out and, and use any of the platforms that we could possibly use, that God's will will go forth, that God's Word will go forth, and, you know, just as He says, it will never come back void. Praise God for His grace and praise God for His mercy this week of keeping us all safe and sound and just blessing us to get through another halfway through this week. So, God is good. God has always been good. He's always been right there. He always has has blessed us in so many ways. Let us give thanks and give praise to Him. Uh, before we get started, uh, uh, let's just pray for our nation. Lord God, We our nation needs our prayers, trying to do all these things and, and, and whatever it may be. You know, we do not need to come against Israel, period. And let us pray for Israel also, that we, that we all would call out to God that... Because he got he he's got his hand on us and he's got his hand on Israel, but he still wants us to call out to him. He needs us to communicate with him. So let us uh, continue to to pray for a Pastor Sister Mary Jane. Let's, let's continue to pray for Brother David and Sister Joy. Um, all of the preachers and teachers that are across this land, all the Sunday school teachers, praise God that they are uh, uh, filled with the Word of God and. Uh, that precious spirit that is in each and every one of us and each and every one of them in our church that is you can't beat that our church is is just a, a god sent and thank god that the people take god with them everywhere they go and keep them and bring him straight back into that church once more that's that's how we have them amazing services so if you have not seen our service or uh any services that we have done or praise god that pastor has done Go to Sparta Church of God and Facebook page and see those because God's been good here lately. So before I, I keep on rambling and, and call names and, and forget names, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise your precious name, God, for your grace, God, and for your mercy, God, once more. Lord God, I, I humbly bow my head, God, before you, Lord. Thank you, God, for what you've done, Father, for me, Father, and wanting to enter in, Father, to your gates, Father, with thanksgiving, God, praising your name, God, for what you've done, Father, and what you're going to do, God, in each and every way. I know you've got your hand, God, upon us, Father, and I pray, God, that your, your children, Father, keep crying out, God, to you, Father, keep talking to you, Father, in every way, Father, Lord God, that, that you would continue, God, to touch us father and hold your hand god upon us father protect us god against these things god and the wiles god that are coming against us god that are the devil and lord god we give you praise honor and glory god because you are so much greater god than anyone or anything god that we could possibly face lord i pray god that you touch our our nation god anoint them god with a favor and anointing father lord god removing the evil god from the other most and father lord god replacing it god with that precious precious blood of jesus christ god that they would accept you and each in every way and i pray god for israel father you continue god to touch them god and anoint them god in the ways god that you'd see father and you'd know father that needs to come to pass god in all of us father i pray god that you anoint them and help them god lord god i ask you god just to touch our preachers god the teachers lord god the ones god that are ministering god of your word father and i pray god that you fill them god with that holy ghost father because they we need every bit of it god that we can take god in this last day and time father and i pray god that you anoint the lost and undone father whatever it takes father for them god to come god into you father i pray god so lord god i thank you god once more god i humbly lord god praise your name god for what you've done father for me and what you've done father for my family lord god in each and every turn lord god you've been in there in every way father you have been there father and every every time and every moment lord god you filled me god with your spirit god and, and run that cup over father that is in the saucer lord god let us praise your name father and never forget god just how great of a god you are Lord, I ask you, God, to anoint me, God, tonight, Father. Lord, God, remove me to the side, Father. Lord, God, that your word would go forth, God, and accomplish, Lord, God, what you'd have it, God, to accomplish. Lord, God, for your honor, for your glory, God, and not mine, God. Let you be exalted, God, in each and every way. Lord, guide us and direct us, Father. In Christ's name I do pray. Amen. So tonight, we will be in Matthew chapter 25, starting at verse 14. And if I if I ask a question, or if I was to ask a question like Pastor Wood, it would be, how do you share the gospel of Jesus Christ? In Matthew 25, 
in verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, and to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. So first and foremost, it said right there, there's several ability. God knows what we can take. God knows what he can give to us for the return of his kingdom. So don't think that um, one man getting five talents is greater than the other man that's getting two talents. And you'll see that here in just a second. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained another two. But he that hath received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Mm. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with, reckoneth with them. And so he had received... Well, first off, I'm going to stop real quick. Realize what was just said in verse 19. <clears throat> After a long time, God gave... Or we're, we're speaking about what we're doing now. But, but at the end, Lord, the Lord gave them the length of time for every bit possible for them to do his work. He gave them the absolute most time he could, just as we are in today. God is giving everyone that chance to accept him. He's given them every bit of the time that they could possibly have and ever possibly need to accept Jesus Christ. That is the only way into heaven. Jesus Christ is the only way. He is the only one that we can depend on to be able to get us into heaven. That is the way we get to the Father. And by that is the blood of Jesus Christ. If you believe on Jesus Christ, believe that he had given his life and shed that blood for the remission of our sins and he rose again on the third day and is at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I today. It was by no way any other man or woman could be saved. Verse 20. And he and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Listen to what he says. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I'm telling you what, I'm ready to hear that. I hope you are too, because we're getting ready to get in digging deeper. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over so many over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that hath received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done. Good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. There was no respect of persons here. They both went out. They both doubled their catch. So whatever was given them, they doubled it and brought it back. Not to the point that it was doubled, but to the point that they put forth that effort and done the things that God has called them to do. And by doing those things, they come back with more than they left with. God is calling us in a mighty way to be able to reach those souls. And I've read through this and God laid this on my heart one morning at 5 a.m. when I was driving to work. I was about, all, I, I don't know, I was probably halfway or, or almost there to work. But we have, we have been given 
that free gift of salvation. So you're given that, that token right there already. And God equips you as you go along with how much ever you need to go forth and accomplish His will and His work. This is exactly the same thing right here. Now this could be interpreted a lot of other ways too, but I'm telling you what God has shown me tonight. There's so many things that we could do. We could do just exactly what's going to happen here in just a minute. Or we could be just like those ones that he didn't have a respecter of persons because one brought back ten and the other brought back four total. God loved them the same way. Because he said the same thing to each one. Will make the ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Praise God for that. He's only asking us to get out. He's only asking us to do what we can. To win those souls. To help. To do the things that he has called us to do. And that is to testify. To do those things. We're going to get into this later on. Because this, I believe, is laid out exactly step by step in this chapter of what we need to do. Verse 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. So in other words, he he dug a hole and buried that money that was given unto him to be able to go and multiply what was needed. He hid. In other words, he hid his salvation from the rest of the world. He didn't show it. He didn't go forth and carry it with him. Because in the middle of buying, in the middle of trading, all of these things, there's testimonies in that. He hid it. And he did not let it go. And God is not one that doesn't sow these things. He asks us to sow. But we ask him to water and bring forth the increase. Praise God for that. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not straw. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with insurance. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given and he shall have abundance but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath I want you to listen hard to 29 right here once more I'm going to read it again for unto every one that hath shall be given if you're willing and you're wanting to do God's work he just tells us right there, for any one that hath, everyone that hath shall be given. You're ready. If you're willing to go, he's going to give you that blood. Because the reason why is because Jesus Christ shed his blood for us. That is our remission of sins. He's given you that free gift. And he shall have abundance. He gives us an abundance of grace. He gives us an abundance of mercy that we need to get through this day and time in this life. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. It tells us that you've got to be awful careful. It tells us that we need to be focused on what God has given us. Because if if it's going to get taken away from you, you do not want to be standing at the white throne of judgment when he does not know you. We'll get into that here in just a second too. Later on down, we're covering that. Verse 30, And cast ye the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness, 
there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. See, when this one was given, only one, he buried it. He thought of it as, as something that was given unto him, and he had to keep it and hold it to himself and guard it with his life. What he didn't realize was how gracious and how mercy that one Lord was. But only if you give your life to him. Only if you do and as he asks, you will enter in. We can't enter in on good works ourselves and only ourselves. But what we can enter in on is his righteousness. Is Jesus Christ, His blood, His righteousness, and everything that He has done. Because that is the only way that we receive any little bit at all of what we get. But the road ended right there. He had that profession. But failed to have the end possession. Let's move on to verse 31. We've talked about God wants to show us and tell us and, and is telling us in this day and time in this last day and time that we need to get out and we need to tell people about the word of God we need to tell people about what God has done for us to be a testimony that maybe someone will be able to hear and understand and say I want what that one's God that love of Jesus Christ that's in them so how do we do it listen to Right here as we start at verse 31 in Matthew 25. We're in the same chapter here. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. And before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He set, shall sh separate... I'm getting tongue-tangled here, I apologize. And before Him shall He shall be gathered all nations... And he shall separate them from one another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on the right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them in the right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, for, for you from the foundation of the world. We're so close. So close to this right here. And if it don't get you excited, I want you to check up tonight. If that does not get you excited of how close we are of hearing that trumpet sound. For I was a hungered, in verse 35, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteousness answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee or thirst and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we the sick or in prison and came unto thee? They're asking him, when have we saw you down here that when you're, you're in any of these ways? When, when, we've, when have we seen you down here? Listen to what he says. And the king shall answer and say unto him, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it to me. God's a personal God, and He takes it right down to the uttermost for you because He wants a personal relationship with you. If you get down to where the nitty-gritty is and you get down to what God wants you to have and wants you to do because He wants to bless you further more than you want to be blessed. But He takes those things personal because of how personal He wants to be with you. He wants, he wants you to walk with Him and talk with Him on every step. And I desire to be that way. In verse 41. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, unto everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. 
I was a stranger, and you took me not in, naked, and you clothed me not, sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw thee a hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall they answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, And as much as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but in the righteousness to life eternal. He's telling us right here. He's showing us right here what we are called to do. By all of this, we can give a testimony as we're doing these things. I guess that is why I'm, I just, I think Samaritan's Purse is just awesome. Ever since I've heard the story about them um, and the goats, was able to, to milk the goats and, and to be able to, they gave them what they've done is they give this village um, some goats and they allowed them to make a a, a business about it. But in the midst of all of them teaching them all of these things on how to milk, on how to do all of these things with that, that milk to make cheese and things such as that, they taught them the Word of God. So each time that business had somebody to come in and buy a gallon of milk, a little bit of cheese, they could tell them how God changed their life about sending someone to help them to turn this village around to have something there. Mm. I was listening to one this week talked about uh, cooking rice. You've probably seen him a lot. His name's Phil Robertson. If you know anything about Duck Dynasty or anything like that. But he made a statement. He said he was cooking rice. You know, something something very simple. And he says, what's wrong with America today is we don't cook enough rice. And I was thinking, well, what are you talking about, Phil? And he cooks, and he overcooks. He says, because there's not be somebody that comes through that door that's hungry. What if I feed them? What if I help them and I can show them just the love and the grace of God? That's what I'm talking about here tonight. Is we're down to the wire. We've made it in this race that we don't know if we've got the next breath. Or if we've got another year. But what I can say is God has called us here and left us here. And we still are here on this earth for this purpose right here. Is to be able to help and touch and show the love and the grace and God's mercy. No one can say God didn't do that for you. Because your testimony is your personal testimony. It's non-negotiable because you know exactly what God has done for you. And if you share that right there in the midst of doing all of these things. Clothing one that needs a coat on their back. Feeding one that needs some needs some feel for their stomach. All of those things. Praise God. We can give back into Him. What He's done for us. He has given us a talent of silver. He's given us these things in this life to be able to accomplish just what He'd have you and called you to do. He is calling tonight. Understand just how critical it is. Listen to one, the one that hid all of that from this whole world. He didn't make it. And he got that talent taken away from him. And given to someone else. God has given so much to me. And I do not want to hide these things. And bury them. So that nobody else can see the love of God in me. Let us be careful about how we go about conducting our Father's business. Just as this word tells us in Matthew 25. Let us abide by how he calls us and what he tells us to do. 
I love each and every one of you tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we close. Praise God of His grace and His mercy and thank God for saving my soul. That I can lay my head down at night and I ain't got to worry one bit. Praise the Lord. Father, we praise your precious name, God, once more. Father, as I humbly bow, God, unto you. Lord, God, reaching, Father, for the throne room, God, once more. God, thanking you, Father, for the times, God, that you've blessed me, God, so much. And, Father, Lord, God, asking for forgiveness, Father, for the times, God, that I've hid. Your such wonders, Father, from this world. Forgive me, Lord God, Father, for the things, God, that I have hid. And, Father, I ask, God, Father, for whoever's listening, Father, including me, God, Father, that I that we would just release, Lord God, what you would have us to release, Father, Lord God, that everybody would see the love of Jesus Christ, God, that we wouldn't wear him, God, on our sleeve, God, but we'd wear, wear him right, right in the middle, God, of our shirt, God, that people could see, God, that the love would be there, God. That they would see we have a heart after God. Just as David did. Lord God, a man after God's own heart. Lord, help us to be that men and women, God. Help us to be that nation once more, God. That is one nation, God, is under you. Lord, anoint Israel, God, once more, Father. Help them and anoint them, God, in each and every way, Father. Just as you'd see fit. And I pray, God, the same, God, for us, Father. But, Father, help us, Lord, God, to let it shine. Lord, God, help us, God, Father, not to, not to dim it, God. And bless us, Lord, God, not to ever bury it in the ground. Praise your precious name, God, once more as we give you thanks, praise, and honor for what you've done, God, even this week, God, in all of our lives, God. Anoint us, guide us, and drag us, Father. Keep us safe and sound, God, and bless us, Lord, God, that we would be in church, God, come Sunday morning. In Christ's name I do pray. Amen. Praise God for each and every one of you. I love you. And I pray that he touches you, anoints you, and that light just continues to flow through. In Jesus' name.